All right, so this is the uh, Majestic um, Ontario Crit number three, I believe. Uh, this is the category five race, just the straight five race. Uh, this is probably my last cap five race. I kind of hung out and stayed in the category just as I dealt with some uh, health issues. I'm still dealing with those issues, but um, yeah, let's keep moving forward as I do it. So anyway, I just wanted to get off the front here, not off the front, but up to the front, get a good start hang out, you know, at the, let's say the first 10 positions and, you know, do what I normally do, try to sit in, save some energy and, you know, surf wheels here and there. So you got Mario from Go Fast off the front up there uh, with an attack and I'm not worried about it. Um, and that's not any disrespect to Mario. He's a strong rider and he's perfectly capable of uh, winning in a breakaway. But, um, you know, it's really hard at the beginning, first lap, if he's not gonna have any help, um, it's hard for it to just stick. We're more than likely, we're gonna be going faster than him over the 30 minutes. So um, I wasn't too worried about it. And I know a lot of people get excited. So I'll let someone else chase that. I uh, just thought I'd sit here next, uh, behind the stage two rider and, you know, just chill and see what, see what happens here. I think, um, you know, Mario's trying to get in the break a couple times here. And uh, the 605 rider pulls off there and it looks like he was losing pace a little bit. So we just accelerate, go around him and back on to stage two. And, you know, here we go. So the, ra the race always starts off like this. And <laughs> it's kind of funny because I had one teammate in this race, Francisco Ramos, and he always starts off the race hanging off, hanging out at the back. And it's kind of funny, like the perspectives when he got done with the race, he was like, man, that race was really fast. And I tell him at the front, like I'm hardly even using any watts, you know? And just to put it in perspective, I used, uh, I want to say I, I averaged 218 watts for this race and he averaged about 258. So here's another uh, go fast teammate. Now I'm a little concerned. I do not want him to go bridge because if him and Mario get together, then of course they can work and they can make it pretty difficult for us to catch, especially since there are, there are pretty much no teams in the race this week. There was no one with, you know, four or five teammates in the race. So there was no, uh, there wasn't gonna be any coordinated efforts to bring back any breaks or anything like that. Not like that happens at Cat 5 anyway. Um, so he's basically running the interference. You know, he's kind of, on the front acting like he's pedaling but he's not going hard obviously the stage two rider notices that and he's like yeah i'm not going for that so it's a smart tactic but basically his teammates off the front and he's just riding kind of like a mile per hour uh slower and if um if mario still had the energy was still pushing that 27 mile per hour pace then a pretty decent gap can open up there so i'm not sure if it was intentional or not i'm pretty sure I mean, they're, they're smart riders. They have a good coach with Pat. And um, yeah, I just wasn't, uh, I wasn't too concerned about it, but at the same time, you know, I'm glad the stage two rider was there to go around it and pick up the pace a little bit. So I'm pretty sure a go fast guy here. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know his name. I, I was a little lazy. I didn't write everybody's name down from the results, but um, yeah, he knows that we pretty much brought the break back already. So. I was a little concerned that maybe he was going to um, fire a second bullet right now and I wasn't going to chase it down. But if I just stay on his wheel, I'm with him to begin with. So, yeah, this is just, uh, you know, par for the course. Just sit in and let the guy in front of you do most of the work. He looks back a couple of times, but I'm pretty sure he knows I'm not going to pull or anything, <laughs> you know, and, and again, he's not really trying to pull either. He's just keeping a steady pace, kind of like um, a medium pace. And yeah, other guys are getting excited. 
everybody was yelling, come on, let's work together. And I'm like, well, yeah, no one's going to bring that back. If you want to pick up the pace, go around, and that's what they did. So I pretty much stay here most of the race. I'm in about the top five to eight positions. That was the goal anyway. And, you know, again, it's a different race. I was starting to say uh, my teammate, Francisco, you know, he averaged like 258 watts or something for the race. I averaged 218 watts for the race. I'm at the back and we're doing pretty much smooth, steady tempo. You know, my cadence stays somewhere from 90 to about 110. And he's back in the back surging four and 500 watts at a time, you know, even on straightaways, they're surging back there just because, the, you know, the accordion effect or the yo-yo. And up here, we're a lot more steady, even though we have some surges here and there, but usually it's coming out of slower corners. I kind of like the setup here, going the opposite way. Um, you know, it doesn't make it too different, but just all the angles are a little bit different. The grades are a little bit different. And believe it or not, even though it's the same course, just reverse, the speeds are a little slower. When we do it the other way, we're almost always over 30 miles per hour on the downhill. And because this downhill has two turns in it now, the speed pretty much stays around, I don't know, 25 to 28 miles per hour. But I don't, I don't recall ever seeing us over 30 on this downhill until the last lap. Unfortunately, I think this rider in front of me uh, may have spit on me. Not really like on me or intentionally, but he spit to the side and <laughs> I kind of said, hey, you know, spit the other way or whatever, but it wasn't intentional. So here's that part I was talking about. As you see downhill here, we're only doing 24. Um, I think most of the race we're doing about 27 here. And when we run it the other way, we're usually doing over 30 on the straightaway on the downside where the start finish is. So again, you see the power is pretty low. Majority of the race, I'm running that low power like that. Surge here usually. And this is a really beat up section of the road. Um, and unfortunately, it's going to play a pretty big part in how I finish the end of the race. And we'll get to that at the time of it. But yeah, I like to be in the turning lane there. Just the turning lane's a lot smoother, but of course it's a lot wider and people can run underneath you. And yeah, so that, that bumpy part is just not fun. Once again, too, these last couple weeks, about a month, you know, there's been some preens out there and believe it or not, in I think in the cat in the women's three, four, five, they had cash up for grabs and um just a shout out to uh, uh, Carolyn Carter. She ended up winning 50 bucks in cash. Um, she won two of the two of the preems and ended up taking home third place. But yeah, that's a great prize for <laughs> us Cat Five people and Cat Four people. You know, throw a little 25 bucks preems out there, and it's not a lot of money, but it's money. You know, and pays for your race fees, stuff like that. So here we got, uh, I believe that's Mario again to the left. I don't know the rider here on my right. But it um, looks like they're about to steal my wheel. And I almost gave it up, but just being assertive, not aggressive, I stick to my wheel and, you know, we don't, we don't rub or bump. There's nothing like that going on. It's not, you know, that big of a deal for any of us. But um, yeah, sometimes you don't want to get rubbed off your wheel. And anytime there's a little gap that opens up or whatever, someone's definitely going to jump on it. And honestly, it's like, uh, it's not, a, it's not exactly a free country, but wheels are free for anyone for the taking, so. So here goes a, a, an attack over here. And uh, again, I'm sorry I don't know anybody's names, but my man in the red there, um, spoiler alert, he kind of takes the bunch sprint at the end. But unfortunately, and I, I'll say it because I don't have it on camera really, but he, um, he celebrates too early. <laughs> And I think he gets clipped at the line. And if I'm not mistaken, he may have gotten DQ'd as well because in, I guess in Cat 5, they don't allow you to take your hands off the steering, I mean, off the handlebars when you cross the finish line. You know, obviously it could be dangerous and you can't take someone out. From what I understand, it wasn't that type of situation. It was simply, he just celebrated and, you know, 
got taken at the line. So that was a preem right there. That, that's why the pace picked up so hard. That was a preem lap. Um, I'm probably sitting in about 12th to 15th position here, but I'm still okay with that. I already know the guys that went for the preem, they're going to come backwards in a second. And if I need to move up, I'll take the opportunity to do so. Um, I believe I missed an opportunity right here from being hesitant. I was going to jump on the guy's wheel here to my left, number 525. And then uh, the 605 rider goes up, and I missed that opportunity to make up about four or five uh, places there. So I'm sitting slightly in the wind, but not too bad. I'll take the inside line here. And then look at my watts if you can to the lower right. Do a little acceleration. And now I'm going to get all those spots back using under 200 watts just off that momentum and getting a little uh, piece of the draft by uh, coming close to these riders here. So I moved up about five, six positions here, you know, basically all under 200 watts. And for me, that's, that's, my, that's the name of my game. I want to make up positions without using power. Um, it's pretty easy to, to go to the front in one of these Cat 5 races. Um, but if you have to do it repeatedly using power, uh, you're going to get popped. I mean, Cat 5 basically just means you're new. It does not mean you're slow. And all of the riders out here basically are capable of popping any one of us. Um, everybody can put in a pretty hard effort for, you know, a minute, two minutes, whatever the case may be. And the, the rider that comes in last can do that as well, you know. So it's not about like, oh, this guy's strong or not strong. It's usually just come down to positioning, experience, and then decision making. And all of us are trying to uh, gain that experience and make better decisions. As uh, once again, you'll see later in the race. Um, I do just about everything right this race, and then I kind of make a bad decision at the end. So my man here in front of me, number 508, I use his energy for the next two laps, basically. Um, it's kind of funny. Um, I don't mean to, like, uh, I'm not knocking him at all or anything else, but somebody told me after the race, they're like, hey, you're following that guy, and he's a little squirrely. And he's not really squirrely. I mean, he does have a lot of movement in his riding. He drifts kind of like a foot to the right, a foot to the left a little bit. But you know what? He was honestly, he was willing to dig and put in that work. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I'll take that ride. So, you know, the, the pace is fairly hot for this, you know, for the way the race played out, the, the pace is hot. You can tell we're all single file and we're single file majority of the race like this. So it wasn't slow. Um, it may not be as high speed as, you know, some of the other races, but I think this is just the characteristics of the, uh, the running the course uh, clockwise like this. So here's another one of those situations where you can just use a little momentum. And we're about three miles per hour down here. But I just moved up again, you know, maybe a spot. I'm back to where I was, but I moved up a spot, you know, basically just by coasting. And again, hats off to GoFast. They've been really active these last few weeks. And they've been doing a lot of good work with the guys and the girls. And Pat's really coaching them up pretty well and getting, um, Getting, you know, bringing a lot of tactics to the lower divisions here. Um, this is where you can learn. This is where you can try moves. This is where you can uh, get off the front, uh, get popped, recover, and get back in. Where, you know, it's a little harder to do that at the higher divisions if you haven't done it in the lower divisions. So, just one of the my um, one of my opinions. A lot of people have been moving up. I think prematurely. And I think everybody's so quick to have that higher category under their name, but they haven't really learned to like have better finishes or better position. And I'm the same way. Um, I can ride pretty much, you know, this category, the four category pretty easily most of the time, but I have not learned how to finish a race. And, you know, you'll see that today as well. I just, finishing a race is a big, it's an important part. It's probably the most important part of us racing out here. You know, all these laps that we're doing right now, they're, they're somewhat trivial other than the amount of energy you spend. Um, but where it really comes down to is that last lap and a half, two laps. That's where, you know, that's where you uh, make your money, so, so to speak. 
All right, I'm kind of not liking where I'm at right here. So I move off of this wheel and I think I pick up number 544 right here. He's a bigger rider anyway. Um, so I'm gonna get a, a better draft here since I'm a little taller. Um, but yeah, this is one of the things I try to concentrate on is, you know, surfing wheels, like who to jump on. And sometimes you can tell when a rider's losing momentum, um, you gotta get off that wheel and get onto the next one. My man in the purple over there with the white helmet, GoPro, Marcelo. He has a, a channel as well. He's been documenting the races also. Kind of does it in the same style that I do with uh, the narration. Um, he, but yeah, he has good videos. He has good breakdown. And it's great to see um, the race from other people's perspective. And uh, something I might be saying in this race, you see his camera and it may be totally wrong. Like. You know, I could be leaving a wake of destruction behind me, cutting people off, clipping wheels, who knows? But from my vantage point, it's like, oh, I'm doing everything pretty good, you know? So it's always good to see from different perspectives. And honestly, I watch all of those videos and try to learn as much as I can. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, from pro races down to Cat 5, Cat 5 women as well. I try to watch them all and soak up what I can from each race. Once again, if you look at the speed, it doesn't look like we're going maybe that fast, but if it's strung out like this, again, people behind us are having an issue moving up. So usually it's fast for at least the, the conditions or circumstances. And, you know, when you come off of some of those preem laps, everybody's a little gassed. I'm feeling pretty good. My heart rate's at about my threshold right now, threshold heart rate. My watts have been pretty, pretty low, excuse me, other than some surges off that corner there and that's another surge off of this corner. But, you know, I max out in this race at 194. So, you know, and that's really because it's hot. Everybody's heart rate that I talked to was a good five to 10 beats higher for this race. And a lot of times the heat will do that and we get a little dehydrated as well. So I don't know if it's right here no, maybe in another lap or so, but uh, there was a rider in front of me, I believe it was 533. At one time, he did bridge up to Mario, and there was three of them up, up front, and I did get a little concerned for a second, only because I knew that uh, he, he has good um, racing IQ as well. And I was like, okay, that could be a problem if they're up there working together, but I think they had a third rider that wasn't able to work with them, and we eventually bring it back. So here, I'm on the front of this group, and I'm not gonna chase this down no matter what. So if you look at my power, I made a decision that I will just go from 150 to 180 and nothing more. And if somebody wants to go around me, they can. Everybody was yelling, you know, pick it up, stuff like that, but no, it's not gonna happen. Um, again, if you wanna come around, come around, pick it up, and then I'll do a little surge here just to get my momentum to where I can slot back in. But yeah, I'm definitely not gonna be the guy to chase down, you know, the breakaway. There has to be some benefit for me in order for me to chase down the breakaway. All right, so 519 here, another good draft. I love drafting uh, with bigger guys. Um, believe it or not, you save so much energy the more you're protected in the, in the, from the wind and all of, it, all of it counts, every little bit of energy counts, but when there's a little bit bigger rider in front of you, you really save a lot of energy. I mean, if you look at me here, I'm 150, under 200 watts again, you know, for most of that little stretch there, and it was doing almost 28 miles per hour, so. And like I said before, like you see my heart rate's at 185. Normally I have a, uh, uh, an operating max or peak operating heart rate of about 188. But today that's kind of out of the window a little. It's not completely out of the window, but I probably have about five more beats today than I would normally just because of the heat. Um, it's probably only about 80 degrees while we're racing, but it feels, it felt like it was 90 something you know and i think it was close to 100 on the day let's 
So here things are a little bunched up. I don't know. Um, we are still pulling back the breakaway up there and it's starting to stretch out again a little, but not much going on really here, but just a little pace line. Um, and I shouldn't really say, I guess it is a pace line. We're just not uh, working together, not taking turns or anything like that. It's just usually one person pulls until they kind of pop and then they pull over, get off the front. I must um, also say that uh, kind of congratulate everybody in the race because being that this is a pure Cat 5 race, it was actually pretty steady, pretty safe. Um, <laughs> nice wave to the fans there. And uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty nice, pretty safe. There wasn't a lot of sketchiness, not a lot of collisions, not too much bumping going around today. And I believe that's Mario going for another dig. He doesn't want this pace to slow down. This is the slowest we've been at 23. And normally we've come through here at about 27, 28. So, yeah, that's one of the things. And that's another reason why sometimes it gets dangerous when it gets too slow. It's another notice here. Notice the rider is getting past. You do not want to sit behind them and draft. You got to kind of recognize that and get around the rider that's being dropped as fast as you can. And I don't mean drop for the race, but just, you know, even opening up a gap. Try to get around them as fast as you can. It's been stretched out, you know, I don't think I realized that the race was this stretched out for, the, for pretty much the duration of the race. And like I said, the speeds don't seem too fast since we're like not even over 30 or anything, but you know, it is what it is. If it's stretched out like this, usually it's a pretty decent pace, again, for the conditions. If it's wind or the gradient, whatever it is, the heat, um, single file means it's fast. Again, I'm going to use a little bit of an outside line here to move up. Again, under 200 watts, not really using any power at all. And that's kind of what I do. Um, it's one of the reasons why I carry a high cadence. I know sometimes people advise me to drop my cadence, you know, which I do. I do vary my cadence. When it's in the 90s, you know, 90, 95, stuff like that, that's a slow cadence for me. And that will bring my heart rate back down, as you can see, down under 180 for a little while. Um, when I'm up towards 105, 110, I'm just spinning it out. So if you see on the left up there in the front, my teammate Francisco goes to the front, which at the time, I wish he would have said something to me. I did not notice that he even passed and went to the front here. He does a great job though, once he gets up to the front of picking up the pace. We only have like three laps to go, I think right now, maybe two, two or three. And he does a pretty good job of going up to the front, keeping it hot. People are pretty fatigued right now. And you know, I don't, I want to clear up a little something. People think that I'm the sprinter and like people work for me, but it's not the case. We don't have any designated riders on our team, you know, in any of our categories. We do work for each other and try to help out our team where we can. And sometimes we'll see how people are feeling and, uh, you know, kind of give whoever we think has the best chance on the day. But usually we make game, uh, in-game decisions or in-race decisions and we just come together four or five laps to go or whatever and you know see how the race is played out and try to go from there but even right now i didn't even rec realize that was him up there and he's like two bikes in front of me right now so at that point right there is where i realized that's francisco but you know he's not on the front right now so i didn't i just thought that was he just moved up to a, a couple positions but now he's going to make his move to the front and keep the pace hot as we have, uh, you know, two to go or, or uh, I think this might be going in the last lap or it's two to go. I can't recall. And it's so crazy, like, um, as you can see here, it's bunched up. And when it's bunched up like this, it means it's slowed down a little bit. We're going two miles per hour slower than we had been earlier in the race. And I think when Francisco gets up to the front, he, he changes that a little bit and starts stretching it out a little bit more again. Yeah, so I think we have two to go right now. And, I, and I'm hoping he keeps it a little faster too, because these last couple weeks I've gotten swarmed at the end. 
or we've gotten swarmed at the end by the pace slowing down, especially Marietta race. I was sitting in good position. And then next thing I know, I went from like eighth position to about 30th position when the pace slowed down and got swarmed and had to fight my way back up to 20th, 21st, something like that. So now Francisco takes the front, picks the pace back up, it stretches out again. Actually, I just saw 29. That's almost the fastest that we've been down this down this stretch right here. But yeah, I think, I don't know if I said it, I'm pretty sure I did, but yeah, this race was actually pretty safe. I heard there was some bumping here and there, but you know, we're getting deeper into the season and a lot of people are learning and getting uh, a lot more comfortable, you know, with riding close to each other and just, you know, making again, better decisions, smart decisions. Francisco does a great pull here, so that's basically one lap, um, one full lap off the front. It's still hot, he's still keeping it 28 on the uphill here. And now we're in the bell lap, this is it here. So I think Francisco went just a little bit early and he's done, this is him coming back here. And I get, I almost get stuck here and don't know which way to go. Almost gets pinched off here. And I was thinking, yeah, I better not take him out. We're the only two of us in the race, so. Here, I think I'm still sitting pretty good. And the rider on the front, I see he's struggling. He puts his head down a couple times. And I was just thinking, ah, I don't want it to slow down. I don't want it to slow down. But look at our speed. We're doing 28 already. And this is where my brain fart comes. We're doing 28 and I try to, go off the front here and I'm in too heavy of a gear. I started off in like 80 something RPMs and I find myself, once I accelerated, I'm like, ah, crap, that's not what I needed. I needed to really, you know, really put the watts down and get a little gap here and hold it to the finish line. So now I'm in a position where I don't wanna be, but I hug the right side so no one can come underneath me into this turn. I hear people yelling inside, but I'm not gonna let them in. Then here I get to go to my sprint here and I run over this bump, drop my chain. It doesn't drop completely, it skips into an easier gear. As you see, the power just completely went out and I had to sh sit and shift for a second to get it back on and my race is pretty much done. <laughs> get passed by a good 12, 13 people and I try to sprint again here, but it, look at my heart rate's almost 140 now and I'm pretty much done for it. And yeah, it is what it is. But, you know, I, in hindsight, it's not that bad of a deal there. If I don't drop my chain, I can probably, I, I can't say I can hold people off. I, I do not think I would have won the race, but I think I may have finished in the top 10. I ended up getting 15 though with that little uh, gear skip or whatever it was to shift back and get the gear corrected. So, so another little safety tip I want to point out right here. Um, so Francisco's gonna come by me in a second. So you see him here. And if you look up in front, Francisco's looking at me. There's a rider that flips a U-turn right there and super dangerous. Um, I know we're going slow here, but this happened just about a month ago in the women's race where right after they sprinted, a rider flipped a U-turn and another girl T-boned her hit at about 30 miles per hour and they're both you know injured pretty good, so. Keep it safe, everyone, and, you know, go ahead and finish the cool down lap before turn around or pull to the side and stop before you make the U-turn.